I made a purely mechanical 3D printed automated camera slider! Yes, and I am right proud of this one. This is something I've been trying to wrap my head around and figure out a solution for for a long time. It's great to get out there and shoot with a friend, but every now and then you've got an idea and you just gotta go out and shoot footage. And very often you're working with a tripod and that footage is static and boring. If you can get the camera to move, it makes it dynamic and interesting. So for probably three years now, I've been trying to figure out how I can get a camera to just do this without any input from anybody else. And on top of it, I don't wanna write code. It's not that there's anything wrong with that and it's not that that's a bad solution. But for my purposes, it's a little overly complicated. I wanted to come up with a solution that was approachable for people who don't know how to write code or deal with electronics. And the hope was also that it would significantly lower the cost because you wouldn't need a controller or anything like that. So this is what I've come up with. So if you want a camera to move from one side to the other, that's fine. But if you don't have anything controlling the motor, it has to be stupid. It has to work in a way that doesn't require any logic, any programmatic logic, anyway. So it would be cool to have a slider that can go from one side to the other. There'd be ways of accomplishing that. But you'd have a limited time frame. No matter what speed the camera was moving at, slow or fast, eventually it's going to get to an end and stop. What if you want to shoot for a long time? That's kind of my intention. So I wanted something that was a reciprocating linear motion. And since my intention is to power it off of an electric motor, I need to turn rotational motion into a linear motion that can move back and forth. I went through a bunch of different ideas about how to accomplish this. The original version had pulleys and belts, and it still had a carriage, but the carriage was hooked up with a different linkage and it was a mess. And then I happened upon this. It's a really short computer-generated image of this mechanical movement. And since I've even seen it in other places like, like spool winders, when people are making their own 3D printed filament, they'll have something similar to this, much smaller. What it is, effectively, is two worm gears intersecting with each other. So you've got a spiral that goes this way, and as the worm gear moves, you've got a piece in your camera housing that's kind of like a nut. As the gear turns, the camera housing moves. When it gets to the end, what happens is the helix loops back, turns direction, and continues on back the other way. So you've got another helical gear moving the other way. And what that lets you do is turn the camera. And just with that, we've converted an infinite circular motion into a reciprocal linear motion. And that was it. That was the aha moment. That was what clicked for me and realized that I could make this. The rest was just getting it out of my head and into the real world. This is a really simple piece of machinery to put together. All of the files for the parts that I've 3D printed are freely available. I have a link to them down below. And outside of that, you need some very minor electronics, some aluminum bar. That's it. So let me show you how I put it together, and then I'll show you what the end result looks like. Sound good? Let's get to it. So here's everything you need to build the slider. We've got some printed parts and we've got some mechanical parts. And I'm gonna run through them for you right now. First, the printed parts. We've got a live end and a cap for that. This houses the motor and houses one end of the linear motion. And we have the dead end, which houses the other end of the linear motion. It has no power. Next, we've got what I'm calling the driver. This is the bi-directional screw. This is the bi-directional worm gear that is moving the slider back and forth. After that, we've got the rider. The rider is the part that sits in the threads of the driver, transmitting the force from the driver into the carriage. Then we've got the carriage. We've got the upper carriage and the lower carriage. These are the two halves of the base that the camera attaches to. They go around our rails and hold everything in place. Living inside of that carriage, we've got the knob. The knob gets attached to a bolt, which holds our camera onto the carriage. That's it for the printed parts. Beyond that, We've got our two rails. These are a half inch aluminum rod. I've cut mine to 19 and an eighth inches, but anywhere in that ballpark will work. The length is determined by the printed parts, not the rails. As long as they fit within the sockets that they're designed to go inside, everything should lock up nice and snug. Beyond the rails, we've got a 12 volt DC geared motor. It's geared to have a low RPMs. I will dig up the one that I have here and put a link to it down below. I'm choosing to run mine off a of plug, so I've got an AC to DC 12 volt power supply here. I did not get this off the internet. I got this from a really cool shop down in the East Village called Tinkersphere. 
but I will try to find something comparable and put it in the link for you guys down below so you can find it. I've got a power switch that's appropriate for the voltage we're using, the mounting screws for the motor, which in my case came with the motor. We got one 7 8 inch quarter 20 bolt. That thread size is a really common standard for mounting camera equipment. It has an Allen wrench head that is kind of cylindrical and that becomes kind of important. And lastly, I've got five number six 3 quarter inch wood screws. Why 3 quarter inch wood screws? Because that's what I happen to have. In addition to the parts, we're going to need a couple other things for assembly. We're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a 3 16 Allen wrench, a 5 64 Allen wrench, or whatever appropriate Allen wrench matches the mounting hardware for your motor. And I am going to use some fast epoxy. I imagine that super glue would work just as well. I just kind of prefer epoxy, so that's what I'm going with. And then two additional things that aren't required for assembly, but that will help it be a sturdier, more solid build are some solder, a soldering iron, and hot glue and a hot glue gun. So let me show you how this thing goes together. First thing that I'm going to tackle is to assemble the live end since that's got a lot of the most complicated parts going on. So the first thing we're going to do is just make sure that the motor goes into this little recess that I've made for it and then use the mounting screws to keep it locked in place. Make sure those screws are snugged down. Move on to the next part, which is going to be getting the speed control and switch installed in the cap. I'm gonna take the retaining screw and washer off of this potentiometer, slide it into the slot, snap straight into place, and then we're going to replace that screw and washer. And we can slide the knob, the control knob, right back on. I'm going to zero out the potentiometer, and then I'm going to put the indicator on the knob somewhere that looks like nothing to me. So that'll be the lowest speed, that'll be the highest. The switch just fits as a friction fit. You can just pop that one right into place. There you go. And then we have to wire up the motor to the speed controller and also connect the switch. So we're gonna do that all in the live line for the motor. And then we can snap everything together and secure it in place. I decided to remove the potentiometer while I'm doing the soldering just cause it gets wires out of the way. It makes things a little bit neater. Beautiful. Now that could be done without soldering. You could crimp on those connections. You could just kind of twist them into place, cover them in tape, but soldering gives you a nice solid connection and I have the tools and materials on hand to do it. So I wanted to. Now what we're gonna do is take the ends, the leads of the motor and the switch, and we're gonna just put them into the nodes in our speed controller, which I just realized I need a little tiny screwdriver for. The way these connections work is these screws push down a small piece of metal that makes contact with the wire, the live wire, but also um, clamps down on it and that keeps the connections in place. But it means that it's also fairly easy to remove, which is very good for the likes of us. Cool. Now I'm gonna replace that potentiometer Get the connectors in place on the other side. The potentiometer connects to the speed controller with a plug, which is just about as easy as it gets. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue the speed controller into the housing so that the port aligns with the hole that I've made in the cap. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you could run a system like this internally. You could have a battery powered, you could have different kinds of speed controllers. So in with the files to print this, to make it yourself, I'm going to include a blank cap that doesn't have any holes in it. That way you can bring that into your design program of choice and punch whatever holes you need through it in order to get whatever kind of connections you need. While the glue gun was heating up, I was just finding uh, that the leads that I had on the motor were a little bit too short for me to get everything where it needed to go. So I just went in and replaced them with some longer ones. So what I'm gonna do is just put a bunch of hot glue on the bottom of the speed controller. Generous glob. Slide that back into place. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool down. 
I had to shove some wires into place. Make sure nothing's sticking out where we don't need it. Okay, cool. So this way we've got power, we've got speed, and we've got the ability to run power from the wall. And then we will use two of our screws to screw the end cap in place. Next, we're gonna fit the driver onto the motor shaft. The driver has two ends. One is a big, wide, kind of tapered hole. That's gonna sit on a corresponding part on the dead end. And the other end is a hole that's shaped to perfectly fit onto the drive shaft of the motor with the keyed flat surface. So we're just gonna snug that up, make sure those two parts are aligned, and slide it into place. And that's a nice, tight pressure fit, which is Perfect. At this point, a couple things have to happen at once because how this goes together. I'll run through a drive fit to show you how all the parts need to be oriented, but the bottom half of the carriage and the rails and the two ends all need to go in place kind of at the same time. The rails socket into these holes that are in the live and dead ends. My rails are a little tight. The carriage goes on top of the driver with this hole, which is the receptacle for the rider, that goes facing the live end. So you'll see that there's one hole in the bottom half of the carriage that goes all the way through. That goes facing the live end. The wings at the bottom half of the carriage go under the rails and over the driver. And then the dead end gets the rails placed and the little male protrusion slots right into the female receptacle on the dryer. That's basically how that works. Um, and when we do this for real, I'm gonna wanna snug that down as tight as possible. So now I think I'm actually gonna do a little bit of sanding on the rails and maybe the sockets, just so that they go together a little bit more smoothly. My tolerances are a bit tight uh, because I want to epoxy them in place. You could also do super glue if you wanted to be able to remove it. But once that's in, that is this whole construction put together and then the rest of the assembly comes together on top of it. I want to make sure that that operation is going to go smoothly so I'm going to take some time to prepare my surfaces right now and then I'll mix up some epoxy and we'll tack everything in. Cool! Now I'm just going to keep this on a level surface tabletop's level, and what that's going to do for us, hopefully, is make sure that everything's nice and aligned. I think that's going to work just fine. So real quickly, since I've got some epoxy mixed up, I'm going to seat this knob piece down on this bolt. I'm going to put a little bit of epoxy just on the bottom of the threads and then screw it down into place. I'll explain how that works later. But those pieces need to go together, so I figured I might as well do it now while the epoxy's wet. My tolerances were a bit tight on this part, which is why I need this wrench. You might not. The knob might just be able to slip down. But for me, I'm gonna need to screw it into place. You can see the epoxy, hopefully getting fed into those threads. And that squeeze out is fine, but I am gonna wipe it out. Like it's fine that it happened, but we're just gonna clean up that seam a little bit. This is actually a functional piece of the construction, and I'll explain all of that in a minute. So I'm gonna clean that off, and then we'll wait for the epoxy to cure. Great, the epoxy has cured up well enough for rock and roll, well enough for us to continue. Let me show you how the rest of the carriage goes together. This piece that I called the rider, it's kinda of like a rail, and the rail sits down in the slot in the driver. So all you do is drop it through the bottom half of the carriage and make sure that rail is seated in the slot. The second thing we're gonna look at is this knob that we've epoxied to this bolt. Now, the bolt needs to turn so that you can screw a camera into it, and the end of that bolt is actually going to act kind of as an axis, and it sits down in this little cavity here. See how that works? What you do next is you just take the top half of the carriage, you're going to feed it down over this bolt and get the holes in the corners. There's one on this side and two on this side. You're going to get those aligned. Yeah, there you go. You're going to drop three screws down into place. Tighten those screws all the way, which is going to snug up the carriage pretty tightly. You don't want to go too far, but you do at first want to go until there's 
with some serious resistance. Now what that's going to effectively do is that the top and bottom half have a tube going through them, or two halves of a tube, and when you tighten down the screws the way I just did, it's going to clamp down on the rails. Now that's not what we want because we're not going to be able to move it. There's not going to be enough play for the, the slider to actually slide back and forth. So after you've tightened it, you want to go in and back off just a bit until the carriage moves freely. Um, that was a half turn. I do about a half turn at a time, maybe a little bit less. Still very tight. There we go. And that actually, I think I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. I can feel that there's some slop between the top and the bottom. Exactly. That looks good. And you can do what I just did. Use your hands to turn the driver to make sure that everything is working correctly. And there you have it. Completely automated reciprocating camera slider with no Arduino, no programming needed. All it takes is a motor and some clever mechanics. All you do is plug it in and you can control your speed. Turn it on and off. You just attach a camera to the top the same way you would any other tripod mount. Shoot some footage. Kinda like this. I am really happy with those results. The shots aren't anything too exciting as far as content goes. Maybe other than the dog, everybody loves dogs. But I'm really happy with the way the camera movement adds to the scene. I wanted to make sure to include some of the points where the carriage hit the end and returned so that you guys could see what that looked like in the, in the footage. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really good for kind of dynamic wide frame shots, really good for time lapse. I'm looking forward to getting to use it in video projects going forward, both the normal stuff in the shop and some footage of getting out there and riding. So if you like the project, uh, if you're interested in what we're doing here, we do a lot of stuff that kind of centers around uh, board sports and making boards and riding, but also a big part of that tradition is shooting and cinematography. So that's kind of what we're working on here. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in seeing more of, hit like, hit subscribe, grab the files because I'd love to get some of these into other people's hands and see what they do with them. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you like using it, what works, what doesn't. I'll probably iterate on this at some point in the future, so feedback would be helpful. And as always, thanks for watching. I love having you here with me, and I'll see you soon. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm pretty proud of this one. <laughs>